in Red Rouge, but I don't think it makes a total bit, of, a, bit a giant bit of difference about it. Now I was hoping today would be a riding day. I have two bikes to uh, to do some test riding on. They're both ready, but Mother Nature said no. So what I decided to do, and, and I'll explain what, uh, what motivates me here, is every time I post a video that has anything to do with polishing aluminum, metal, engine parts, I, I get, I think one of the videos has 227,000 hits. So, I know there's an appetite for that out there. Now, because I just got yesterday, I got the, the bits for the Dremel tool. These are not real Dremel tool things. They're from, from China and they're very, very inexpensive. What I thought I'd do is compare some of them, the old to the new, uh, try some different compounds, try some different things we could do with them. Because here's the thing. One of the things that's always challenged me is not only polishing the aluminum or the part, or having these shiny mirrors, having shiny things. You have to maintain it. There's a point at which, even if you buy a new car and you simonize it, at some point in time, you gotta re-simonize it. And that, of course, is in the eye of the beholder. But polishing parts on a motorcycle seems like a very common thing. Seems like there's a big appetite for knowing how to do it. And it's not that hard. It's difficult if you don't know the basic rules of engagement. So. This, this video is going to be aimed at people 101, basic information, not high-tech stuff where you see a guy polishing a trailer truck with a thousand dollars worth of equipment. This is something you should, the tool itself is about 20, I think it's 20 dollars in Harbor Freight. And the bits that I got, I bought about a thousand of them for, for under 30 dollars. I bought three different bundles of them. And I have about a thousand of my own, most of which are real, I'll call them real Dremel tools, because real Dremel tools are definitely a little bit better, but a lot of people don't want to spend seven dollars a bit. So having these inexpensive ones, it solves a need. It's like what Harbor Freight does with tools, these bits do with for that. And I'm sure they do it for modelers as well as motorcyclists. And I know for a fact, because I asked my friend who's a jeweler, Fadi. Does he ever use these? He says all the time. So, and, and I mean, he's a professional. So, let me see if I can share some good polishing information today. None of this is going to be high tech. None of it is going to be what I call, uh, you know, out of the realm if they show you how to buff out a $4,000 car. I, this is stuff average people with average motorcycles that want to make them a little bit custom, a little bit nicer, a little bit polished. And, and there's no big expense of money and no real hard work involved. A lot of times the hardest work is, if you're going to polish a bolt head, is unscrewing the bolt, polishing it, and putting it back. Or polishing it right on the motorcycle. We're going to try to see what we can do some of each today. And I have some scraps of aluminum of various grades to see. I can do a little comparison. And so I think the information that's on the video will be useful to most people. It's certainly not so high tech that you would be overwhelmed. And let's face it, this, this is a lot like mixing concrete. You need somebody to show you how much sand and how much water and how to use the shovel. And, da, da, da. and once you're done, you can mix concrete for the rest of your life. Just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, most of the people that would be watching my channel have some interest in modeling or in restoring antique motorcycles. Those are the two things that I center on. But some of the knowledge that I've accumulated over 50 years of doing this is very easy to share because you can demonstrate it now on a video through YouTube. Very easy to do. Many, many years ago, if you wanted to learn something, what you had to have is a friend who knew it or a friend who mixed concrete and would help you stop making a mess. So, and, and just an example, this is a 43-year-old motorcycle. I've tried to maintain it and I've had it seven or eight years. I've tried to maintain it keep it up to date, keep it polished, keep it clean. And, and it's, of course, it's for you to decide whether this is something you would like or if you like that patina look. Because I know a lot of people, especially, and I, I, I don't agree with them, but I know they're entitled to their own opinion. They prefer that, that patina look. Well, 
that's for you to decide. But this is what I like. So this is what I'm going to try to share on this video. We're going to try to do it under shop conditions. We can't. I would love to do it outside on a sunny day because this can be dusty and dirty work. But I don't like to do it when I could be riding. So I always save these jobs for my my priorities are any day I can ride, I like to ride. Then if I can't ride and it's too cold to paint, I like to work in a cellar. If it's in that in between like a day like today, it's not too cold outside, but it's raining. So what I like to do on the rainy days is look for something. I'm done with my restoration for the year. And you can look on, a, on this channel if you're not familiar with the Windy U channel. There's about 130 videos or something of restoring that 650. There's videos of restoring every one of these bikes. But, but the thing that a lot of people would like to know, I know this is a fact, is they have a bike, especially if you bought a bike really inexpensively and you're in the beginning of the winter and you're gonna strip it down for some reason, maybe rebuild the engine, put rings in it or whatever. This is a great time while you have it apart to clean it and polish it. And that's what the focus of my channel, and paint it of course, put on one of these really slick paint jobs. That's what my channel is basically dedicated to. And we do have a dedicated video on my channel, and I think there's 1,700 videos, 1,750 right now, of polishing this engine. And that, when I had the, the valve cover off, I polished it, the clutch cover. Every time I've had to work on a bike, I try to maintain it. Every time I ride in a salt, I try to clean the salt off the pipes and off the front of the engine. And so what's happened is you have an, a relatively old motorcycle that when people see it, unless they know about motorcycles, it will it looks pretty new. There's another video on my channel of polishing that swing arm on the 750. And I remember that had a couple hundred thousand hits. Now, that was an old crude video from many years ago before we had better equipment, better editing skills. But it's still good information. The information is still there. I know we have some videos out there of polishing titanium, of which this is one on the R1. And we do have some videos of polishing carbon fiber, and they're all out on the channel for anybody that's really interested in that. But today, we're going to try to focus on polishing metal parts. And if you ever want to have a labor of love, just buy one of these old bikes and polish the frame, and you'll see what a labor of love is all about. There is probably 100 hours of polishing on that frame. And it was a truly a labor of love. And when I did the restoration on this, this was last year's project. Ah. I was so glad I did that part ahead of time. And even the carbon fiber parts I made in the last year when I did this restoration, and that's all on our Ninja Restoration video. And a Ninja Restoration video is still ongoing because we're not finished with the project. We haven't even test rided the bike. So this polishing video becomes part of that set, but it's going to basically be devoted to trying to polish things and basically very basic information that I think everybody can use. And what's funny is sometimes you polish up one or two little parts or the levers or some little part you can polish little things and you're riding down the road on a bike one day and you just say wow it's just a little bit nicer than it was when everything was that matte black that the factories like and i try to minimize the amount of flat black matte black that i have on my motorcycles i try to make as many parts shiny and polished and there is a giant advantage. When I get back from a ride in the rain or a ride to salty roads, it's easy to clean them. When they're all matte, matte black, good luck. Now some other truth in advertising. Nobody ever sends me these products for free. I buy everything I can off Amazon. I have an Amazon Prime account, so I try to, I try to get as much of it as I can from Amazon Prime without having to pay shipping. And I know the price will always be pretty uh, middle of the road, kind of like shopping at Sears Roebuck used to be. But even these carbon fiber parts we made, polishing carbon fiber, that's a little bit different than aluminum, but I think we're going to start with some basics, and I hope we're going to be able to share some good information. But as everybody who follows the channel knows, my fish just came out of hibernation yesterday, and they're getting ready to start eating like they were, uh, like they were my friends. They, they really are getting hungry, I can see. Come on, boys. Chow time. And it doesn't take long and they realize it's feeding time. We've been hibernating all winter. Time to start eating. I love these fish. I try to share them on every video because I know several of my friends have, have ponds or interest in fish. And this is the kind of day we try to use for doing polishing. 
jobs because it is a crappy day. There's no sun. Even if it stopped raining, the roads are going to be all wet and, and they're still full of salt in certain places where I ride. So I'm trying to be selective about where I ride. Uh, Jimmy Durante used to say, start off each day with a smile. I saw start off each day with a strong cup of coffee. And then we get to work. And start off by feeding these birds generously. My birds, my fish, my family. Feed them all. Now to keep this test simple and understandable, I have the inexpensive Dremel tool that's from Harbor Freight. This was about $10 from Amazon, and I'll try to put up the link to these somewhere in the video. And these were the buffing balls. So what we have is various grits of, and I'll take these out of course and show them, for polishing. Basically, I'm gonna to try to concentrate on aluminum today, because that's the most common thing people wanna polish. And I wanna to try to keep it simple, and I wanna to try to keep it that you can see the results in real time. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna come out exactly the way I want, but the first screen I look on Amazon Prime, and I look up Dremel Tool Accessories. And on the first page, the top of the list, it's an Amazon choice, and this one is $12. I thought these were both 10, well, I'm a little off. But these are the ones that I have, and that was one of the ones I ordered. And the other one is on page two, and it's $17, and it's, R-O-C-A-R-I-S, Rocarius, 80 pieces for $16. And that's from, again, from Amazon Prime. Now, I bought this at the local Harbor Freight store, and it's the nice thing about it. It's, of course, it's a variable speed, and I'll get into that in a minute. I do have three or four other Dremel tools with the cable, and I have a Fordham tool, which is a big heavy-duty uh, Dremel tool. But... But for all the purposes, I'm trying to keep this simple. This is all you need to get started. But what's really handy is to make sure you have, I don't know if they even make these without the speed control, but the, some of the big ones like the Fordham, they're just on off. This has a speed control. So this is really a desirable thing to have when you want to polish. Now I'm going to start anything I polish by getting it nice and flat with some 2000 grit. No matter what, this is always a good way to start, especially with aluminum. 2000 grit in DASA, the red line, Rhino wet sandpaper. Again, available from Amazon. Okay, so the first thing is soapy water, a little bit of Dawn. This is now, the reason I'm starting with this, this is soft aluminum. This is the aluminum you would normally buy in Lowe's. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you buy a piece of aluminum, it's a very soft grade of aluminum. It's not an alloy. It's going to polish up very easily but it's not going to hold the shine as well as a 2024, 6061, or 75. It's not going to hold up like an alloy, but it will polish up. Now, this happens to be a camera mount I made years ago when I was making a lot of GoPro mounts. So it's a good piece of scrap. But again, anything I want to polish, step one is always get it nice and flat. That's pretty easy to do. And I want to do it in real time because every test we do, we're going to start with something that's 2000 grit sanded. And now the purpose of the polishing is to get out the 2000 grit scratches that are on there. So the first thing I wanna test, and these are four different grades of, this looks like it's the 3M, the uh, what I call Scotch-Brite or whatever. Now I'm just doing this by feel since they haven't marked them. It feels like the black one is the roughest, but we won't know. I won't know until I look at the sanding scratches. What I'm looking for with these little bits is the sanding scratches. So here I have the material. I know this is soft aluminum, and I've marked off a spot. I'm going to then move the tape down, the tape down, so I can see what each one of the wheels does when I just put the... It's going to put scratches on it. That's the whole idea here. The idea of these wheels is to get off the scratches that are going in this direction, so I'll go in this direction. And I'll show right away what that is, and then we'll come back and see which one buffs up the easiest. And this is kind of a 101. When you want to buff something out, if, if you don't get it flat to begin with, the final thing is going to have mountains in it. So to get it flat sanded, and then get the, each, each grade of polishing you do gets out the scratches from the grade before. 
And if you watch them do, they do like truck wheels. They do 180, then they go to 320, then to 600, then 2000, and then they start with compound, a rough compound, medium compound, and final compound. And usually at the end of it, they'll put some protection on carnauba wax or flits. But this is basic 101 polishing. I think this should be, by the end of this day, we will have learned something. Okay, so here you have the piece. All the scratches are going in this direction. And I'm doing the brown wheel first. I'm going to do each one of them separate on speed two. And what this is going to do is take out all of the scratches going in the one direction and put them going in the other direction. It's really not rocket science to do this. Trying to show it in real time. Now if you look at it close, you'll see all the scratches are going in this direction. So we've taken out all the scratches going in the vertical and putting them all horizontal. So I've marked what that one is, tan. Now I'm going to move the tape and do the second one. So what I'm going to be able to do at the end of this is compare the scratches. And, and it sounds like it's, what does this have to do with polishing? Well, you'll see very soon. So with the tape off, you can see all the scratches are going this way now. So here they're going this way. Now the idea in a perfect world, if you get into high-tech polishing, you would want to have this scratch, these scratches be, let's say 320, these 400, then 600, then 1000, then maybe 1500, then 2000. That, if you were doing some high-tech thing. I'm trying to do this in a simple way. These are just the basics of polishing wheel I'm going to check is the green one. I'm on speed two. Now I'll explain why. I'm not using full a higher speed. If you push this shaft all the way in, critical information, so that this is as short as possible, you can run higher speeds. When these are sticking way out and you get them a little out of balance, you can bend these shafts because the real Dremel tools are case hardened. These ones that come from China are not. But it doesn't mean you can't use them. It just means you're probably safer using a lower speed. And maybe by the end of this test, we can get one that bends and flies off, and you'll see it in real time. But I'm not going to do it on purpose. Okay, so I'm going to run a low speed. And again, I blocked off where the previous one was. Let me see if I can do it up close. I'm not sure, but you can see how quick that scuffs it. How quick it puts scratches in it. And I'm doing this all in real time. Because here's the reason. It's like that thing I used of mixing concrete. Once you know how to do this, you can polish the whole world. If you don't know how to do it, it gets frustrating. Now you can see how quick we've been able to turn the scratches from going this way to this way. And it, I didn't see much difference between either one of them, but they're both that material like scotch Bright. Maybe they're going to be very close. When we're done, we're going to have four of these stripes, and then we can compare it. And I have a loop, so I can look under it with a loop. Okay, the next one is the red, and it's that scotch bright material. Again, I'm not sure which is the, the right now until I look at the scratches under a loop. And it seems like this would be boring to look at and do, and yep, but you know what, in the end, this is what makes the polishing really come out nice. Okay, so you can get some idea. Now we have the red. I've got one more of these to do. Okay, the last one is the black. And again, I'm trying to do these all in real time, not, not with any camera cuts. And they all go pretty quick. I think that's the thing you take from the, from the whole test. And that's all it takes. Now, how easy this would be if we were doing an engine part, this, this would really make it, or a valve cover or something complex. But, but it's the technology is not gonna change. So if I look at this now, I have each one of them. And I basically, visually, without looking through a microscope or a loop, I can't tell which is which. But it doesn't matter right now. And I'm going to show the way I would test these. And it's, it's not real scientific. I'm going to mask this off. Then I'm going to go buff this on a buffing wheel, a big buffing wheel. And then just see which one of the scratches disappear first. It's a very unscientific way to do it, but it works every time. So this is how I blocked off my test piece. And I have the writing of which part I'm testing. Now I'm just going to go over to the big buffing wheel because that'll make this go real quick. And we can see the result right away. Now we'll do this in real time. I just think that's going to be the most productive way. This is just a test. I want to show 
show it in real time. I don't want to show it with camera cuts, if at all possible. Now what I have to do is just get rid of some of the compound. You see there's no camera cuts here and I want to show what that looks like if I can. Again, no camera cuts. And if that's, if that's how we're going to be able to do it, of course, with a big buffing wheel. But I want to see now that I know what the big buffing wheel is going to look like, and it, I don't, to be honest, I think all those things put the same scratches in it, or close enough that for the type of work I'm doing, just to make everything look, I'd like to have these parts look like that, and I think there's people that would like to have their bolt heads and spokes, and I, I can picture where this would really be a handy thing to have. Now I can work this area with the little polishing wheels, and then I can compare each, I don't think it's going to matter because I think this is going to polish up. But remember, soft aluminum polishes up pretty quickly. The, the alloys, and we have alloy chips to test, they're going to take a little more work. But that's what we're doing this test for. And this is just good, I think, just good basic information that a lot of people might not know. Now, if I look at it, even with a, a magnifier, I can't see a whole lot of difference between any of the wheels. They all seem to do a good job, and they all seem they all seem pretty similar, to be honest. So I've come to the conclusion that for these were twelve dollars, that I'll get a lot of parts ready for buffing with these, and I don't think it'll be real critical which one you use. So I look at this and I say, well, that was that was probably this is probably a tool that I'll find useful when I go out to the garage and work on the GS or the RD or bolt heads because this is going to allow me, even when it's on the cable tool, to get in a lot of little fins and areas and spots and because they're inexpensive. But keep in mind, this shaft is not case hardened. So if you put this right at the end and you induce this and then have turn the Dremel speed up to 10, this is going to fly off and take a tooth out. So the way you avoid that, use a lower speed and of course wear safety equipment. So I'd say the first thing I learned from this test is this was a good investment. The second part of the test, I have this bag of stuff, and there's two separate things. These are very soft and fuzzy. Sometimes these are made to go without compound. Some you can use compound on. I won't know until I do a test. Same thing with these. These are usually made, you put wax on it from a candle, ordinary candle wax, and then some rouge, of which there is black, red, green, and you can buy that rouge in Harbor Freight, about $6 for a stick. So, again, all inexpensive stuff, all basic stuff, but I think, like everything I try to do, is use basic tools, inexpensive tools, and basic knowledge to come up with a really good result. And, and if you want to see the result, you just look at the bikes in the garage, or some of the model planes I've built, or, or you just... just <laughs> Just believe me, because I'm cute, that's all. I don't think that's gonna work. So here's the first of the ones I wanna test is the one that looks like cloth laminations. Again, these are riveted, there's no screw holding them together. I'm sure there's some kind of a, this is a pop rivet operation going on there. I'm gonna use a low speed, and I'm not sticking this out in like a diving board, so I wanted to show this. Let's see if we can show this conveniently. This is ordinary wax, candle wax. Just want to put some on the wheel, and usually the wheel's going to throw threads all over the place until you get it broken in. Now, the roughest of all the compounds, black is the roughest, red is medium, so is green, blue, each one of these you can buy. But right now I want to try the, the roughest of the compounds. And let's just see if this works. I'll show one in real time. And then I'll try the rest of the compounds and see which one seems to work the best. Now, because we have this all laid out this way, now it's simple. I can go right up the middle. Now, this would go faster if I speed up the tool, but it's not going to change anything. It's just going to go faster. And I want to see myself how long this is going to take. Again, when I actually do this, I, the next part of this test will be on a separate video. I'll go out to the garage on a sunny day that we can get outside and do some of the engine parts while it's, they're right on the bike with these tools. These look promising, to be honest. Now, I want to show, if I turn this up to three, 
Let's see if this makes it easier. That's on speed three now. Yeah, a little bit better on speed three. But again, I'm, I'm comparing this to having that big buffing wheel that... And I'm trying to show it in real time. Remember, the, the secret to everything... On my channel, the secret to, that I try to do is to always do something in real time so you don't get a false reading. In other words, you don't see a camera cut and then you say, well, I, there was somebody on YouTube or somewhere, I don't remember. They showed, yeah, well, here's the part and it's rough. And the next thing they show, the part's all buffed out. I want to see them buffing it out. I want to, I try to learn from everybody on YouTube. And I thank all the people that have been on YouTube already and shared what they know. Now, you can see right away, and I'll show this up close again. You can see, let's get the camera off the tripod. Try to show this in real time. You can see the buffing wheel took away all the scratches and this pad really didn't take away all the scratches but remember this pad is black rouge so now i'll get another pad and i'll do it with well let's see we'll put the red rouge on it and see how that works out well let me just this is just a test of the red rouge and again because this is going slow you're trading away some of the some of the ability to cut that you'd have on a bigger buffing wheel but but if I show it, and if I show it in real time, I think you'll get the point. And the point is that you can do the work that you would need a big buffing wheel. But if you have that big buffing wheel, and you're trying to polish a head bolt without taking it off the bike, well, that's going to be a little difficult. That's going to be challenging. Now, let me just show this right now. It looks like this aluminum is very soft, and it looks like I'm, I'm almost to the... I, I actually am to the point... And I'll show it up close. I'm to the point that I've almost got the scratches out. I could work that. Probably if I turned it up to speed four, I could get the scratches out. But this is the heavy buffing wheel. And this is the little wheel. And you've seen both of them in real time. That is one final test. I upped the speed to speed four. And I tried some of the white compounds. So... It looks like these are, these cut real well. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be just really good when I'm done. But Because a lot of times you can't take a part off the motorcycle easily. You want to polish it right in place. Now as, I'm, as the compound dries out, you can start to see the shine coming through. Oop. Let me show it. One second. Let me get a rig. And we're almost at the point. Now, I see something I don't like. I'm seeing scratches in there. So, it may be that we've got to go a little bit slower or with a little less pressure. Because if I'm seeing scratches, it means I still have to take the scratches out. So, the next part of our test, this is this little, I have, it's wool, I guess, or fuzz or some felt. And what I wanted to do is, I just wanted to try it with no compound first. Let's see if these are going to be... I'm going to go back to speed three to make it a kind of a fair test. Just see if this is going to take scratches out as it is. Some of these felt pads work better with no compound. Now you can see the pad turning black. That means it's picking up aluminum. Well, let me just see how efficient that is. Ah, it's, it's picking up aluminum, but now, without any camera cuts, Ordinary Meguiar's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Take a little bit of that. Let's see how that works. Let me get a rig. <clears throat> Again, I know it's boring, but I do like to show this stuff in real time. Now look how quick it picks up the aluminum. When you see it turning black, that's the aluminum. Now, how long it's going to take to take out the scratches? Anybody's guess. It looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Now those pads we used the, with the, that look like little buffing wheels, I have a feeling, just a gut feeling, they'd be good on steel or brass, but on aluminum they're leaving scratches. They're just not doing the job the way they should. Now here comes the shine. You can see it's, let's see how this worked out. 
with mother's polish. Yeah, it's it's now you can see and I'll just try to show this if I can You can see the big buffin wheel did a really good job. This one still left some scratches and this one This one is really working pretty good. So my guess is just a rough guess This buffin wheel will be good for soft aluminum Now I'm not sure you can see The difference but right down the middle is the scratches that are still remain and here's the bottom line of this whole thing. These with the little Meguiars seem to do a pretty good job. These, the ones, and I've got a whole bucket of them over there. These, I think, on soft aluminum, these are a little bit harsh on the soft aluminum. If you can see right in the middle where we did the ones with, and again, I don't know if you can see this. This is not a really good macro lens, but... But the ones we did on a buffin wheel and the ones this is the buffin wheel and this is the ones with the the soft wheel the only thing with all of these wheels they shed so it's nice if you can do this outside rather than in a confined area but what happens if they use it for a good amount of time they get nice and solid but in the beginning they throw threads all over the place these these look like a fine i think we're going to be able to use these to polish motorcycle parts and I think that the bottom line of this test is these are going to be the ones that are out of the whole test. These are the ones that are going to be the most useful. So I think what I've tried to do is show that, and this is what I've taken from the test so far, that all of the, all of the little, uh, the 3M wheels, let's call them 3M wheels, they all are very similar. I don't know that one is a whole ton better. It looks like the red one might be, for this soft aluminum, might be the best. But then by doing our, our scratches this way, this is the soft ball. That looks like it's just as good as the big buffin wheel. And the other one does not, that big stripe down the middle, which I can see. I'm not sure if you can see there's a stripe right down the middle. But if you see that, so I, my suggestion is that if we would, if we had a part we could take off the motorcycle conveniently, like a, like a uh, side cover or something. Well, you could ru run it on a big buffing wheel, but on parts you can't take off the bike conveniently. It looks like we've got it almost just as good with that little Dremel thing. It might take a little more time, but and it, but it certainly would be a doable thing. So there, that is a good test now. But that only covers, and I wanted to do this in pieces. That's soft. Lowe's aluminum basically not an alloy now I want to try it on a piece of alloy aluminum which will be just a little bit different now this is a piece of aluminum that I used to manufacture when I was a partner in Joe Cassie's machine shop we used to make these they're model airplane landing gear they're aluminum 7075 t6 a very hard grade of aluminum probably one of the hardest grades you would normally use that it's, it's totally different than what we just polished. But what I want to do is take one, I know these polish up nicely on a big buffing wheel. I want to see how they're going to polish up, and I've done a lot of these when I was modeling, including spinners, which are made out of soft aluminum. But the landing gears are usually made out of 7075 or titanium. And the titanium, I don't have a piece right here, but I'm going to get a piece. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I have an old exhaust pipe outside, I don't know. But polishing titanium and hard aluminum, very similar. Like the pipes on the R6, they polished up just like they would if they were 7075. But again, I'm trying to do this in real time. I know it's boring. I know this tends to stretch out. But if you see it, these are the kind of things if you see in real time. <sighs> okay, so we've got basically 2,000 grit scratches. That's where I would start any polishing operation with 2,000 grit scratches. Okay, so here's our test port, and we're gonna try various ways of getting out the 2,000 grit scratches. Now, the next thing I wanna do is see if I can replicate the original polish. Sometimes you can do it and sometimes it's either too rough or too soft since I already have this one on the the Dremel tool. Let's see how this plays out. We're on speed four. And 
And the idea, if you don't press down too hard, you make less scratches. Simple, as simple as that. Now, if you press down, anytime you're using a Dremel tool, there's a trick. If you hear the Dremel tool slowing down, you're pressing too hard. You should always be cutting with maximum RPM, whatever that is. Now, we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to do this as quick as you, whoop, as quick as you could do it on a. Uh, I just scratched the part. See what would be ideal if I could hold this in a vise. I don't have a vise here. Let's just see how this plays out. It looks like it's coming up pretty quick. Again, if I go in one direction only, I'm going to make scratches. So I'm trying to go... And by the way, the Mother's Aluminum Polish, Magan Aluminum Polish is good stuff. It's good. It even polishes paint real well. You just got to remember, don't push down too hard. Let the tool do the work. And since we're doing this in real time, so far, these things have really proven to be pretty good. I did not, to be honest, I did not expect them to be this good. I was thinking they were really going to start flying apart in midair. Maybe they are if I turn the speed up. But let me just wipe both of these off now. Get all the compound off. And now let's see if you can compare. I put a big scratch in this one, by the way. Let's see if you can compare. Yeah, they look. They look pretty similar to me, not not totally different anyway. Again, we don't have a really great macro lens here, but that that tells me that on a hard aluminum, you know, it, it what, what happens with this once this is buffed up, this will stay that way for six months. It's really good. The harder the aluminum, the harder it is to polish, and the longer it stays polished. So what I wanted to do is go down to this part. I want to, this little pad that was leaving scratches in a soft aluminum. This was a little bit harder of a wheel and I, I suspect it'll be a little bit better on harder material. And I don't have a casting I can use right now, but a casting usually is porous and it's very difficult to get it really nice. You've got to really grind away at it. But let's see if we can have some luck with this. It seems like this wheel is a lot rougher, but if you go back and forth and do your own little experiments on the part you're doing, I don't think it should be that difficult. Now I can picture this one really good on RD fins. There's little radiuses everywhere. I want to show it in real time. I don't want to do one of these fancy Photoshop things. Okay, that's the one we just did on the very end. Now, I have one final thing I want to test on this, and this will be a really good test. This is the next part of the test. This is, of course, Flitz, Flitz Metal Polish, and on my channel, there are several dedicated videos. You just need to dial up the word Flitz of polishing. I've done I, well, more than one, I know that, and we've done a lot of parts. But basically, this is here's what this is, 6,000 grit. So it's not going to do a lot of polishing. What it's going to do is leave, a, and it, just like Carnuba Wax, a little bit of protection. So here's what I'm going to, I may as well do my finger. Just put it on apart. Take this little, this is a brand new one by the way. Put a little bit on there. And we're going to do this at a low speed or otherwise it's going to, it'll be all over the mirror by the time I'm done. Now you don't need a lot of this material. You need very little. But this does leave what it does to my experience, it leaves a nice, a nice level of protection. I don't want to, I don't want this flying all over the place. You can see how it's already turned black. 
Well, it's already removing stuff, so let me get this clean. See if I can demo this out. Yeah, look at the stuff all over the place. Okay, let's start at the top. So it's very apparent to me, the big buffing wheel, the advantage I can have on this, big buffing wheel saves time. The, the little Dremel tool takes a little longer, but the result is pretty much the same. Not a whole lot different. And the flitz, I know is not going to make it shine a lot more, <clears throat> but I should have some protection here when I'm done. Now, what I've taken from this so far is all these little attachments, I'm not sure in the long run how they're going to hold up, but they certainly look, you have enough of them, they certainly look like what I would say is a really good investment for anybody that's detailing out anything, even detailing out a car engine or anything. And I have had good luck having the bikes go over the winter with flits. Let me just wipe this off. Let's see if we could show this up close and personal. Now what I'll do is I'll take the tape off of this piece. Of, this is 70-75 T6. Take, I'll take the tape off and show what the unpolished re relative to the polished is. I think you'll be surprised. Now I'm trying to show if you can see the difference, and I'm sure you can. I mean, from even from far away, I can see the difference in that. That that is just what those little pads have done, and I would say the overall thing I've got from today's test is they're definitely a nice tool. I'm glad I added that to my tool arsenal. And I think what I've shown is how quick you can go from from 2,000 grit scratches to what amounts to be those little buffing, the little 3M pads to a final shine. And I haven't even put the flitz on this yet. If I flitz this over, that even adds another layer of protection. So all good information, usable information. Now what this is, is ordinary coal roll steel. It's just something I want to test as long as I have a little time here. I could share this. Nothing special about it. I'm just going to see. Now on cold roll steel there's usually a an oxidation coating over the top of it which you have to get off which is what this blue black whatever you want to call that color looks like. So before you can really polish it you've got to get done with that. Now these wouldn't typically be motorcycle parts but it's I don't have a motorcycle part that I could polish right now that the, basically I've got everything polished. So, so far anyway, but anyway, somebody will come along with something they want to polish and we'll use that as an excuse to to do a polishing job. Now, I'm going to have to sand this off. It looks like it looks like this coating, since this is pretty old stuff, yeah, it's going to take a minute or so to get this off, but I do want to get it off and I want to show this again in real time. I'm, I'm such a fanatic about real time. I don't know why. And the re th there is a reason why, because I've watched shows on YouTube, and I love YouTube, I don't ever badmouth YouTube. And, but th I've been watching things, and I really want to learn. I'm passionate about this. I really want to learn how to do a certain thing. And the, I watch for 20 minutes, and there's one step I want to see is how do you do that to that? And it goes click, and it's done. And I really want to see that. And I know people don't do that on purpose. They just don't realize that people like myself that are just trying to learn. I'm trying the best I can. And from my lifetime of modeling, I know sharing information is a wonderful thing. It's a great way to make friends. And usually when you share the information with somebody, most people feel compelled to share something back with you. So it's a win-win, no doubt about it. Well, let's see how this works out. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, they're just going to cut my losses here, but that's, no, that's okay. I want to show it up close, of course. Let me see if I can. Okay, now we want to get one of those little wire things and see if we can put some scratches in it. All right, so here we have that metal that we just 2,000 grit sanded. I'll put this on speed four. I don't think it matters which one of these we use. 
Let's see how long it takes to put scratches in this. Now another thing I haven't touched on, if you have an SOS pad, there's a lot of aluminum parts. If you do nothing else, you can just use an SOS pad and some water and get them almost as good as you can with compound. SOS pad, I don't know what grid it is, it seems to do a really good job of polishing aluminum also, even if you don't, I mean, I, I can't imagine anybody doesn't have an SOS pad. All right, so let's take a look at this. Just wipe it off. Okay, now we do have some scratches in there. Now let's see how long it takes to get those scratches out. We're doing any iron, and I just realized this is not an exception to the rule. Usually, iron will have a coating of what you think is rust. It, in the industry, it's called scale, and you've got to sand or grind or do something to get rid of the scale before you can polish the iron. And the scale is there. It's like a protective oxidation, and I just thought I'd use it as an exa a good way to show how I did this. You just, just get out some SOS and do it and live with it. The fact that it just takes a little time, good old SOS. Now, you're not going to get, in fact, there's a lot of scratches on this. This is going to be difficult to do that, like I wanted to do, but I can show that the general idea here is even the SOS will leave a little bit of a shine on it, but you can see where the scale ends, and you're not going to polish the scale. The scale is just... But what we have to do is get this part flat. Now, in this case, the 2000 grit paper didn't, didn't really put a dent in it, so I'm going to have to get some rougher paper, maybe some 600, and get that smooth because you can see all the little pits in it and everything. You have to get that nice and smooth and then try to polish it with our polishing wheel. So what I'll try in this next is some thousand grit. I'm just trying to get rid of, I, I know I can't sand the scale. It just takes forever to sand it. But just to get that smooth that I can do a little polishing on it. And this is just a test anyway. If this were a real part, it wouldn't bother me how long I want to spend. But I, I don't want to spend a half an hour just to do a test. I want to show how quick you can bring iron up, but you've got to get rid of the scale first. And then you've got to smooth the iron because this is not, when they draw this out through a die, it's it's not perfectly smooth. If we, this were a motorcycle part, I'd block sand it flat with a hard block. Well, let's try the 1,000 grit and see what happens. Okay, 1,000 grit, I know will scratch this. I don't know if it's going to make it as smooth as I hope it does, but... Now, if I were really polishing, if this were really a part for a motorcycle, I'd, I'd probably start, seeing what I've seen now, I'd start with 600, go to 1,000, then to 1,500, and then 2,000, work my way up. It would just save time. If I start with 2,000, it's, it's going to take forever to do it. Now, 1,000 is going right through this quickly, so, but I know 1,000 is going to leave what I, what I call scratches. But at least a thousand is taking a scale off a lot faster too. So if you know about the scale now, a lot of times you take paint remover and you take off an iron part and you take it off and, and it's rusted underneath the paint. Well, this is the same thing. The scale is really a form of oxidation. So let's just see if it's our lucky day here. If the thousand grid is putting any a dent in it, yeah, it is. It actually is. So now, let's lose that, and let's get out a piece of it. Let's try doing it in real time. Let's take some 2,000 grit, and let's see if it's our lucky day. Now, imagine if you had a side cover or a, a brake rotor or something that you wanted to shine up, or whatever, a spinner for a model plane. So, and I want to make a special thanks to somebody that I haven't seen in many years. His name is Noel Drindak. I don't know if he's still modeling. He was a super expert modeler and good friend for many years, of course. And he was the one that wrote an article in our modeling thing, Stunt News, when I was the editor of Stunt News. What happened was he wrote a wonderful article about polishing up model airplane spinners that to this day I use that information. 
and I'm I'm sharing some of what Noel wrote right now and I'm trying to do it in real time now if Noel had video capability and YouTube capability back then I'm sure he could have had a lot of people making shiny stuff well that's certainly a step in the right direction now let's get out the buffer and see if that buffer can bring that up Now I do want to try and see if these, this is the soft buffing ball. Usually the Meguiar's will bring steel up, it brings titanium up nice. Now I wish I had these little buffing balls years ago when I did a lot of this stuff by hand. And you can imagine how many things that is. Anyway, we tried to share some good information. Let's just see how this comes up. I'm not sure if we're we hit a home run here or just a triple or a double or what. Now of course all these things, let me get a rag here. Oops. All these things are in the eye of the beholder. So let's see if this cleans up. We showed that thing of going through the scale. And we've tried to show most or well pretty much anything that matters in real time yeah that that's that's to me that is definitely good information you can use now these things are inexpensive they're not hard to do they require a little patience and but not a lot of money so people are new to the channel of course maybe don't realize i try to post a video almost every day there's days i miss a day but I try to include all the things that I've learned over a lifetime, more than 50 years of modeling, motorcycle restoration, and just life in general. Now, this is one of the next things we're going to test. We got this whole thing. This was inexpensive too. And these, I think these little 3M balls, I'm going to find uses for these. These really exceeded my expectations, but these were great. These little and I don't know if, if, because of the way I shot the video of the TV screen, if the Amazon, uh, the link came out the way I wanted it to, but uh, just look up Amazon Prime and Dremel Tool Accessories, and that's it. And to be honest, I think if you look at this the way I look at it, I'm trying to get the light to reflect on that. I think you can see we made some progress today. Now, what I really hope, though, is that we shared the basic way to test a product or test something that you're trying or to do a comparison. And there's just, I think there's some good information on this video. If you think it'll help somebody else, well, share it with them. Or, you know, we got 7,000 subscribers now and I get email every day about comments about what people like and don't like. Usually they don't like me. Now some final thoughts. There are parts on this bike I polished like the brake rotors. These parts are hardened steel. They're really difficult to polish, but not impossible. They just take a lot more time. Parts like this, they're relatively hard aluminum. They polish up beautifully. Fork legs always polish up nice. All these little parts. Now when I did these, I did a lot of these by hand. Having those little Dremel tools, boy, would that have made that an, a nice easy thing. One of the things these little tools is going to allow me to do is get in here and in here where I can I can bring up the finish inside the fins. The GS is a particularly uh, difficult thing to polish. I've done a lot of it by hand. And again, we have out on the channel. That's one of the most popular videos is the polishing of the GS engine. And big flat surfaces, you can use a big uh, an ordinary buffing wheel. But when you get to do all these little areas, do the edges of the fins and everything, Boy, it can get time consuming, but to me, every bit of it is worth it. And if you have a passion for these old air-cooled motors, or you have a Norton or a BSA or a Triumph, an old one, <laughs> polishing those cases is a wonder joys of owning these old bikes. Now, I did the swing arm on this bike and on the, the 752, and that, again, becomes a really big job because you really can't easily take it off the bike. But parts like this that you can take off the bike with a couple of bolts, very easy to do. You can take the shifter off, very easy to do. The frame, not so much. Order yourself a pizza because it's going to take more than, 
than one polishing session. But every one of these, and, and I'm just looking around before I end the video, the titanium on an R1 polishes up like magic. That Huntsman resin polishes up beautifully. And we have so many painting videos. I had a buff paint. Well, I don't even have to go there. Just, just look anywhere on the channel. So I'm ending the video saying I hope you enjoy the passion of old motorcycles as much as I do. I consider these national treasures. They belong in some kind of museum, but I don't put, not putting anything in a museum. I want to ride, I want to ride the wheels off of these. I want to wear things out. I want to wear tires out. And when things get a little sh shabby, I want to polish them back to better than new. So I hope the information on this video was of some value to you. Hope you enjoy our channel. Enjoy our sharing our little life adventures. And the biggest thing of all, thanks for watching.